All right, today we are talking about how to develop a strong content marketing plan. So, you guys have heard some of this before. We're gonna cover it in very easy to remember terms. Buckle up, cue the theme song, and let's head on in. I ran marketing departments in corporate America for 10 years and then ran a digital agency for over another 10 years. So I know their roadmap to online success and that formula always includes producing content to share your message from your marketing message to sales and delivery. Hi, I'm Jennifer Neal and you're listening to The Content Toolbox. I believe the secret to finding and creating raving fans online is through you. In building relationships through stories that share who you really are, create genuine, crazy, raving fans that keep begging you to take their money. And on this podcast, we'll be talking strategies, tactics, tips, and more with myself and other industry experts. So buckle up and start your engines, cause it's go time. You are finally considering doing a content marketing strategy. So how are you going to develop a strong content marketing plan? Well, reference our other episode where we talked about the core strategy and make sure that you go download our template. So it's the content marketing strategy template references that other episode walking right through our acronym. We made it really easy to remember with core strategy. However, I want to keep this episode here a little bit shorter and kind of give you some of the high levels so that you can really get your head wrapped around it before you start diving deep down into the minutia. So the place that this really, really starts is in looking at your goals, the things that you want to accomplish and what are your KPIs and KPIs, for those of you who don't know, key performance indicators. So the things that you really want to pay attention to and track. So the very first one that we wanna do, we wanna look at our consumption metrics. That means looking back at the content that you've already produced, what are your target prospects and customers doing with that information? Meaning likes, comments, downloads, views. These are things that this is people like doing something with your content. So you wanna look at what are those consumption metrics looking like and what do you want them to look like? So then secondly, we wanna look at sharing or engagement metrics as well. So our sharing metrics are just that. Are your emails forwarded? Are people forwarding and sharing your posts or tagging other people in some of your posts? Then you know that those are things that are resonating with your target audience, right? Then we also want to look at List growth, we wanna look at your opt-in rates. How many people are joining your list, whether that is your email list, your pixel list, your text messaging list, your Facebook messenger list, how many people are joining your Facebook group? Wherever you are gathering people and creating lists, what are those numbers and how is your content affecting those numbers? And how do you want your content to affect those numbers? So that helps you set your baseline and where you wanna go. And finally, sales metrics. That's what we're all after anyway, right? So how are people engaging with your content? How much of that is directly converting? And if you get really, really advanced, and this is for advanced people, you can start tagging on all of those little like question mark, blah, 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 blah. It's called UTM code, it's tracking. So how can we, uh, we can pay attention to places that people have been and visited uh, with cookies and pixel tracking and all that stuff. So you know how much of your content they have hit before hitting the purchase button, right? And how well is some of the content actually converting? So we wanna look at open rates, click rates, purchase rates, and all of those things matter. So you wanna keep track of those conversion numbers and then how can you, like what are your targets? What are your goals? right? So it all starts with setting those goals because you can't know if you have succeeded if you didn't know where you were trying to go. So we need to establish, here's where I am, here's where I want to go, so that you can very easily measure how well you did on that journey. Makes total sense, right? So look at your numbers. <laughs> all right, so next you want to know your audience. And again, this is something you really want to map out and pay attention to the different kinds of avatars that come into your business. You really want to know 
what are their big pains? What are their questions? What are things that they are desiring and what do they need to get to the next step? This also happens in your customer journey because the thing that somebody needs is a completely cold traffic, cold audience is not going to be the same thing that somebody who's been on your list for two years is going to need because their needs and desires are going to be different at that stage in the game. So you need to know what your customer journey is and then the avatar and the needs and desires and the steps that they need at each one of those steps along the way. Then you have to know as well how your content fits into answering those questions, helping them with those needs and those desires at each point, right? And what stories you're going to be able to tell and how you're going to transition them and paying attention to what kinds of media you're going to use because what tools you have for distributing them at each of those points. I know it kind of hit a lot right there and I'll dive into each of those here in just a sec, but it's really important for you to understand how your content and your value ladder even kind of lines up with what's happening at each one of those stages so that you know kind of what to talk about at that point. Now you're going to take what you know to talk about and you are going to go do some SEO research, SEO search engine optimization. What that means really is we're saying we know that our customers have these pains at this point in time. So what we're going to do is go verify and I've done other episodes on this, so you can go check out like how to do some research and things like that, um, or just Google it. But you want to go look at what are the things that people are searching for when they're trying to find the answer to this, because it may not always line up, right? So you're going to want to do some of your research and know, okay, this is ultimately what I want to talk about, but here's what people are searching about. So I know that I have to create content about what people are searching for so that I can get them to the answer that's going to help them. Does that make sense? We want to tap into the traffic that people are searching for. Okay, so I mentioned before that we want to map out your messaging to match the customer journey. So literally, I suggest mapping out what your customer journey looks like. When people are just in a problem aware stage, and then when they're in, they're like, they're warming up, they're in the sales process, and they're in the delivery process and the continued on nurture process, what are the pains and the needs and the desires and things that they have in those stages? And you're gonna match up your stories, your content, including that SEO research that you've done for each one of those steps, because that's gonna help you understand here is how I need to talk to a person who is at this stage in their journey. Make sense? Then the next step we're going to do is add in your channels of distribution. So for each one of those channels, like if we're out here in the marketing stage, you're not already going to have their information. You probably won't even have their pixel, right? So you want to, what can I do to attract that cold audience? That's probably going to be social posts, possibly ads, possibly JV opportunities. Like what are the methodologies that you're going to do to try to find people out here? versus as they're coming through your customer journey and they're in the sales process. So they've already educated. They, they're much more aware of you and your program and service. So what are the things that they need at that point in time? And chances are that you have a lot more of their information. So you may have their email address. You may have their phone number. You may just have a pixel or a cookie on them. So how can you use that? So that could be in retargeting ads. That could be in text message campaign. That could be an information that goes to your Facebook group that could be in emails that just get sent out. So you want to know what are the platforms that I'm going to share this information at on each of these stages. And do I have a system? Do I have a central traffic control site that I can bring everybody back to every time because it has links to literally everything we do? Do I have a marketing automation system that is set up to make sure that each of these drips and messages and things that need to happen along the way, especially when they're in the sales process and after, that that stuff is getting delivered without you having to remember to do it. That's where automation really, really helps. So you kind of want to create a map that's like customer needs, customer journey, here's our content, here's our stories, here's our SEO information, and here is the channels that we're going to target for each kind of one of these areas. And then here's the systems that we're going to use, the tools 
that we're going to be using to help distribute that information. Make sense? Then we get into your actual content machine, which is repurposing that content. So you know, like all of this is coming from your original core content. You know that that information is going to resonate because that's what they're searching for. So we want to grab that information and then we're going to repurpose the content into the types of media that will work for each of those platforms and create a variety of different kinds of media. So that's where you can turn your one original research thing that you've done from a video or from a blog into a blog and into those little audiogram things and engaging graphics and charts, and infographics and all those things that become shareable assets that really catch people's attention. That's where you can break that stuff down and say, I know that this is going to be relevant to share here at the sales stage, where this is going to be relevant to share here at the marketing stage. So that's where your content machine really comes into place because from your original core recordings, then you've done all the research, then you're going to put it through your content machine, repurposing and start creating all of those different assets so that they get worked into your system and they're helping to move people along as part of your content strategy the whole time. It's starting to make a whole lot of sense, right? Okay, then you are going to distribute your information. As part of your content machine, that is going to be a distribution machine. You will have people and systems and tools and stuff in place so that you can get the information that you have produced out into those emails, out into those social posts, out into your ads, wherever you have decided that stuff's gonna go, it becomes a repeatable process over and over and over because you've already identified for everything I create, I know that I'm gonna create these quotes that are gonna be used in marketing here, I'm gonna create this infographic that's gonna be used here, and it just becomes a machine that consistently repeats. That's when you can delegate out the production of all of that because it's the same thing over and over. And as that machine is up and running, then you're gonna go back and look at your KPIs. So we're gonna come full circle all the way back around. So you're gonna go look at, okay, how are we doing? Are we increasing? Are we moving towards our target? And if so, good, continue doing more of that. If you're not, then you may want to look, okay, do we need to change the platform? Do we need to change the type of media? And you can start to make those tweaks in your machine by looking at the numbers and seeing how well it's measuring against your goals. Simple as that, right? I know you can totally do this. All right. So for more information, go check out some other episodes. We've done one where we talked completely about the core strategy. I've talked about the content machine, the repurposing system, and we've talked a lot about the uh, master traffic controller sites as well on how you can utilize those sites to really get your content distributed and continue to bring people back into the same place over and over. So make sure that you go check out the virtualgen.com and grab the rest of our free resources. You can also grab that template, that content strategy template that I talked about and uh, go read some of our other blogs and information and comment back. I'll, I'll leave a post here, you ready? Take a picture, share this if you enjoyed this episode. Uh, be sure to rate and review it, we really appreciate it. And get out there, create some amazing content. The worst thing that you're gonna do is just create some more content, which can always be repurposed and reused in the future. So. Get out there, get engaged, and start doing it. We will see you at thevirtualgen.com and on the next episode. All right.